Hi guys and welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now this radio that I'm going to show you in this video, I've technically shown you before, but this is called the Ariton DM168. Now if you've not seen this before, then it's a dual band handheld transceiver that covers the 2 meter and the 70 centimeter handband. It supports FM and DMR, can also transmit APRS location packets and it has an automatic satellite tracking feature that allows you to use low earth orbiting ham radio satellites. However, it's not full duplex and it does not have an inbuilt GPS, so any locations need to be manually entered. Now I'll show you that later when we go through the software. The version of this radio that I showed you before was the Radio Oddity GD168, which retails at around £179. This radio is also sold as an Anytone 80 D168UV, and that's currently on sale for around £119. However, this version, the Ariton DM168, is being sold for around £75, and even cheaper if you use the coupon code that I'll put in the video description. Now, all the accessories you get in the box with this Ariton DM168 is exactly the same as the Anytone and the Radio Oddity versions, apart from a small difference in the small supplied antenna. You do get two antennas and you get two batteries. The slimline battery has a capacity of 1800 milliamp hour, and the larger, more chunky battery has a capacity of 2600 milliamp hour. Just like the other two versions, the batteries cannot be directly charged using a USB C cable but it does come with a desktop charger and you can use the USB-C cable to charge the battery via the radio. Yep, this radio has USB-C socket on the right side next to the speaker mic socket. And this USB socket can not only be used for charging the battery, but also programming the radio. So turning on the DM168, we can see the user interface looks similar to the other versions that we've seen before. And it has that lovely background. Nice. Now I'm pretty sure that this DM168 is using the Anytone firmware. And the reason for that is the firmware numbers is slightly different to what's on the Radio Oddity website. Just so that we're showing an up-to-date UI, I did update the firmware in this radio using the Anytone ATD168 CPS and firmware, which actually loaded perfectly with no issues. Now I do not have the Anytone version, but let's just do a quick comparison of this Ariton version against the Radio Oddity version. Going through the menus on the Radio Oddity version and this Ariton version, they pretty much look identical. Even going through the radio settings, the channel settings and satellite features, it all looks the same. The only area where there was a difference, which is expected, is actually the firmware version. The Radio Oddity version appears to be higher than the Anytone firmware, but I'm pretty sure that they're running independently. Now, just to be sure that this radio is working as advertised, let's test the RF power output. On the two meter band at around 145 megahertz, we're seeing an output of around seven to eight watts, and that's with the radio power level set to turbo. Up on the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz, we're seeing an output power of around six watts. So I think this radio is definitely living up to its specifications and quite possibly it is actually exactly the same hardware as the Radiolity version and the Anytone version. Now another feature that I was impressed about on the last version when I tested it was the enhanced audio feature. So let's just take a quick listen to that to see what it sounds like on FM and I'm going to test with standard and then enhanced audio turned on. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey M0 DQW testing audio on the Ariton DM168. Now this is with the microphone set to normal over. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing the audio on the Ariton DM168. This is now with the uh, audio set to enhanced. This is with the audio set to enhanced. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey over. Well, I could not really tell any difference there, which is a little bit strange. Maybe I should have also enabled the voice noise reduction. 
And when it comes to programming, and as mentioned earlier, I use the Anytone latest programming software. This works very, very well, especially with the USB-C connection here. Reading and writing to the radio is extremely fast, way faster than using the regular serial adapters that plug into the speaker mic socket ports like we see on most handheld radios. As this radio supports DMR, the programming software obviously supports full programming for all of the DMR features, like channels, zones, contacts, and talk groups. Now, DMR, in my opinion, is one of the most complicated digital modes to use on ham radio, and that's most likely because DMR was not actually designed to be used on ham radio. It's kind of been adopted from commercial systems. So covering how to program DMR using this software in a short over video like this is pretty much impossible. However, there are lots of YouTube videos which cover how to program DMR radios. Now the satellite programming feature on this software has been massively improved since we last saw it. You are now able to choose which satellites to import to the radio, as well as edit the transmit and receive frequencies and set the CTCS before sending to the radio. Now the older version, which we had to rely on a curated version of this data, which led to incorrect settings for frequencies, offsets and tones, plus listing satellites which were not in use anymore. So it's nice to see that this has been updated. Now if you want to see me using this radio, actually talking through a low earth orbiting satellite, then I'll leave a link down in the video description. I use this exact radio and using an arrow antenna while standing in the garden. This is two, okay, zero, hotel, Oscar, Quebec. So the last test is the spurious emissions. And for those of you that saw the Radio Odyssey version video, then you would remember the spurious emissions were really good. So let's test this version. I have the radio set to the highest power setting and of course have an attenuator between the radio and the tiny SA Ultra. So we get around minus 26 dB input into the tiny SA for its best measuring range. Now the tiny SA Ultra is in harmonic measuring mode and at 145 megahertz, which is the two meter band, we're seeing a really clean transmission here, which of course is really nice to see. Up on the 70 centimeter band at 435 megahertz, we also see a clean output. Now the Tiny SA Ultra takes a while to fully settle at high frequencies, and that's due to the scan range. The higher the frequency, the harmonics are gonna be further apart. However, we do eventually see that the output is just as clean as the two meter band. Again, very nice. So that's the Ariton DM168, a really quick overview. If you wanna see more in depth in this particular radio, then go and check out my Radi Oddity GD168 video, which I'll obviously link as well down in the video description. Now after testing and using this radio, it actually appears to be the same radio. However, the Ariton DM168 is significantly cheaper, especially if you use the coupon code that I put in the video description. Now, personally, if I'm going to grab a handheld radio to take out with me, if I'm going out for the day or going for a walk or something, this is the radio that I take. Forget that it even has digital modes or the satellite features with the APRS from fixed locations. Just as a two meter and 70 centimeter FM handheld radio, it works extremely well and it's proper small. It just fits in the back pocket, especially if you've got the smaller antenna on. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about it. And if you didn't get yourself one of those Radiolity ones or the Anytone version, then check this out. It's probably priced a little bit better than those and might tip you to get one. It's definitely one of the better radios that I've tested. And I really like the screen. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it before, but I like the screen. What do you guys think? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. You take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.